for him to think that his wife needs to agree with everything he says and if she says anything that he disagrees with he's just gonna send her home it's like what kind of relationship is that what are you expecting from these women hi everyone i'm julie she's kelly and we're here to find love we're in bachelor season 27 episode 6 and we're back again this week and every week to recap sex season we know we have a lot of new faces here, so welcome. We're so excited to see so many people joining the HTML fam. If you haven't subscribed yet or you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. We're a small and growing channel and we really want to reach more people and get these conversations about love and relationships out there. For those who don't know us, we're two dating coaches who analyze the relationship psychology and dating themes in reality TV, especially The Bachelor. So if you're into this kind of stuff, follow along and join the conversation. In episode six, we moved to Estonia, which was kind of a cool location. We had two one-on-one -on -one dates and one group date. There's only like nine women left, which to me was shocking. I didn't know that we had whittled ourselves down so much already, but it feels like all the women who are left now are all girls who do actually have some kind of connection with Zach. So it's going to be interesting to see how these next couple weeks play out. But this was a pretty big week because we had at least one really huge departure, which was Jess. So we'll get into that. Let's start off with the first drama that happened in this episode, which was the conflict between Kat, Brooklyn, and Charity. Charity got the first one-on-one -on -one date. Zach comes to pick her up. Everyone's excited because they hadn't seen Zach in a hot minute because he had had COVID for the past week. And the big controversy was that Kat took it upon herself right before Charity and Zach left for their date. Uh, she kind of pulled Zach aside to say hi, make out with him a little bit, and then sent him back in to go on her date. Charity and the rest of the girls were pretty upset by it. I think, to be fair, it was pretty disrespectful. It was pretty rude for her to kind of go in right before Charity is about to leave for her date with Zach and kiss the guy. It does kind of, you know, everyone's so sensitive to stuff in this environment and just, you know you're gonna get time with him later. So to do that was a little bit rude. I do think that, you know, I get why she did it. I kind of get that it had been a long time since she had seen him in her head. She's dating him. She should be able to say hi and give him a kiss when it's been a while since they've seen each other. So I do get it. I do think that, I even kind of think that maybe I would have done something similar. However, as soon as you realize, as soon as it was pointed out to Kat that the girls were upset, I think it would have been really easy for her. Like I said, like, I think I might have done this too. And then realized if the girls told me like, oh, actually it's very upsetting to all of these girls. I probably have been like, oh my God, I didn't even think about it that way. You're right, that is so rude. Sorry. So simple, right? Even if Kat didn't realize that it would have rubbed those girls the wrong way, as soon as it was pointed out to her, I'm sure Kat would have also been upset if somebody else kissed Zach right before her one-on-one -on -one date. So it was just to me, it felt like she was being a little obtuse and just defensive about it. She was just being like, she just wanted to kiss him and she was like, I deserve to do that. So therefore no one should be upset at me. And it's like, no, just because you wanted to do it doesn't mean that it's okay for you to do it, right? Just because you wanted to see him doesn't mean that it's not going to upset other people in the house. And like, you don't need to sit there and prove why it was okay for you to do it. I think everyone understands why she did it, but the problem was that she never, she wouldn't apologize for it. She wouldn't apologize for the fact that it did kind of upset everyone else. It was disrespectful and it was, you know, just like a rude thing to do to Charity. Fortunately, Charity went on to have a totally fine one-on-one -on -one date, but it could have thrown her off. And so, you know, I think that, I mean, Brooklyn came in real hot to <laughs> Charity's defense. Um, I think the internet loves Brooklyn because, and to be fair, I think I do too. She was being really, I, I just love a girl who will come in and like defend <laughs> other women so voraciously. Was she maybe a little bit over the top? Probably, <laughs> but I did appreciate her kind of coming in and, and telling Kat like, hey, that's really not okay. And I think that Kat really should have just taken a, taken a beat and just said, like just tried to be a little empathetic in that situation and just said, oh, you're right. That was a little rude. I shouldn't have done that. I think the other thing with Kat too is she was displaying what I would say is pretty classic defensive behavior in which when these girls came to her with their problem with her the thing that she did that upset them 
instead of actually dialoguing with what they were saying, she immediately went into, I need to prove my innocence in this situation. I need to prove why it's okay that I did what I did. Instead of actually listening to what they were saying and putting on that empathetic ear of like, did I do something that upset these girls? And if I did, can I, how can I acknowledge their feelings and validate what they feel? She might also, she might feel different really. She might feel like it's okay for her to go talk to Zach and that's fine. But the strength of her reaction came from wanting to prove that she was right. And we see this in relationships all the time when couples fight. It's one person will bring up an issue to the other and the other, their instinct is like, I need to prove why I'm not a bad person. They can't really get into the conversation about the topic, the actual thing that happened, the actual feelings that the other person is having. They Their instinct just goes, I need to just prove why I'm a good person. I need to prove that I'm okay. I need to prove that, you know, like you can't, you, you cannot come at me this way. Let me prove why I am deserving of grace in the situation. And so I think when we have that type of reaction in a conflict, that's how you know, like, ooh, okay, your your focus here is on yourself as opposed to being on the in the preservation of your connection to this person. In this case, it's another girl, not a partner. But you know that if your instinct is like, let me prove why. I'm, a, I'm still a good person. I'm not a bad guy. Let me prove why I'm not a bad guy. You know that this conversation is not about preserving your relationship. It's about just preserving your ego. And that's exactly what Kat did in this conversation. She really wasn't able to like go there and show any kind of empathy for what Charity was dealing with in that situation. She was just, I need to prove myself right. And I think that's... <sighs> I mean, it's such a problem in relationships. I guess it's fine because they're not dating here. It's just two girls, two friends talking to each other. But, you know, it's a great example of you can see her spinning it into Brooklyn was attacking me. Brooklyn hurt my feelings with how she talked to me. So now I'm the one who's now I'm the one who is, you know, who got hurt in the situation. Right. She's spinning it into Let's focus on how mean you were when you brought up your issue. Let's focus on how mean you were when you brought up how I hurt you instead of talking about the actual thing, which is how I hurt you, right? And so it's a classic way that people will spin conversations with this. I think it's like a good habit to watch out for in your own conflicts when you're talking mm-hmm. to other people, when you're talking to a partner, it's like a really good habit to watch out for and notice if you are doing this, because I think we all are guilty of it. Sometimes it's like someone brings up an issue and you're like, oh God, am I a bad person? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not a bad person. Like, don't look at me. Don't see me that way. People have that reaction so much. And so, yeah, it just, it was just like a case study in defensiveness to me. Such an excellent point because if Kat was able to do that and lean into the expansiveness of that conflict, which is not, I am wrong or right, but there is someone's feelings that I need to tend to here. It would have allowed the other girls to understand why Kat did that and they would have had more sympathy for her situation because in that situation, no one's like 100% right or wrong and in a lot of conflict, that's going to be the case. There is going to be like a lot of shades and dimensionality to any issue that you're discussing. What matters is if you're able to meet in the middle and just have like, well, this is where I was coming from, but I see where you're coming from and I just really want to repair this connection that we have going on Yeah, because this is bigger than Zach. I mean, this is about like how they're really having this experience of being in love and i wish that like the girls were able to see there's no one else that understands this unique experience more than anyone else in that room so they're the people that you can really confide in they're the people that you can share a lot of these insecurities with and they get it they're not someone that you should be like fighting against or defending against or someone that I mean, they are in direct competition to some sense, but I think at the end of the day, it was, it would have been really nice to see Kat just understand what she did, because if she did, I really believe the girls would have been a lot more open and receptive to it. Like, yeah, that was a crappy thing you did, but honestly, I probably would have done that too. But in this situation, like I now see 
the example of what happens when I do it that way, why don't we all talk about like if how we feel right. about Zach being pulled right. before one on one dates? Is that okay for all of us? Okay, now that we know that's the boundary, we're not gonna hurt exactly. each other. Exactly. It could have been exactly a, total, a totally different thing. You see how wow, that was a really good modeling of how that conversation could go, like if that was a healthy relationship between all of these women, right? I mean, obviously it's not easy, but when you think about it, it's like, okay, we all don't wanna hurt each other. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to hurt you. Let's talk about how to avoid that, right? Mm-hmm. And to be fair to Kat, Brooklyn was coming in real hot. Clearly, Brooklyn real hot. <laughs> was not trying to have a nice, pleasant conversation with Kat. That was not Brooklyn's intention whatsoever. So I will say that, like, it, it, Kat was kind of, it would have been real big of her to be able to meet Brooklyn's, like, spicy one-liners with that level of grace and empathy. That would have been really big of Kat. Um But, you know, that is kind of what we're called to do when someone tells us that we have hurt them. If your instinct is calling out the tone with which they're they're bringing it up to you, or if your focus is on, let me prove to you why I'm actually a good person, it's like you're focusing on the wrong thing. Because as soon as you tend to that person's emotions and let them know like, hey, I see that you are hurt and that my actions did that, as soon as you show that to them, Brooklyn's fire will dissipate. Brooklyn will say like, oh, okay. Like, I I feel like you're understanding me. And that changes the tone of the conversation. It's like you telling someone you shouldn't be so mad at me, that's not gonna make them less mad at you. But you saying, hey, I see that I hurt you. That is what is gonna change the tone of the conversation. And so we are kind of called to just be a bit of the, the bigger person in these situations. Because at the end of the day, Kat's the one who did the thing first, the thing that hurt all of these other women. So Kat is the one who kind of needs to be able to take a higher road, right? Mm-hmm. She's being called to be a bigger person and, you know, make up for the mistake that she had made. Exactly. And the higher world leads you to better relationships. So even if it does feel a little bit like you're swallowing your pride and it's like, oof, I really don't want to admit that I did a bad thing or that I hurt people this way, it would have just created, I think, a dynamic and an energy in the house that she really would have benefited from. I yeah. think it's going to backfire in her face because she wasn't able to have that conversation. Yeah. And we'll start to see the repercussions of that in the following weeks with her and Brooklyn. I can actually see that kind of like that initial thing that could have Im- immediately been like squashed is going to continue. Yeah. To grow. And I think exactly. they're going to have a little bit more like tension between each other. Yeah, I I really love how you said that, like, you know, people don't want to admit that they did a bad thing or that they hurt someone, but it's like, y'all, it's okay. We all make mistakes. It's like, it's human. It's like (laughs) human. And it's like, you know, I think one of our commenters once said this, like, we hold people to such high standards. And it's like, no, it's, we make mistakes. I'm not saying no one's ever should ever make a mistake in a relationship. Otherwise, you're a bad person. It's like, once you make the mistake, you just sit back and think about like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Let me now, like now that I'm in a, in a state of reflection, now that I can really think about what's happening, let me make a better choice than the one that I just made. Right. And like, that's all we're calling. That's all we're all called to do in a relationship. So we, we do our best. Sometimes we're going to fuck up. It's okay. Sometimes you're going to hurt someone. You're a human being. And all you got to do is acknowledge that it happened. You don't need to try to prove to people why you didn't hurt them. No, I didn't hurt you. No, it's okay that I, what I did was... You don't need to prove anything. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. You're not a bad person for sometimes hurting people because that's just... That's what it is to be human. You just need to be able to take accountability for when you do it. So that was the cat in Brooklyn conflict. Charity did go on her one-on-one date. Fortunately, her date was actually... It went really well. It seemed like her and Zach did connect. He gave her the rose she was so sweet i think she's she's like a teddy bear to me she's just so i don't know she's just so soft and sweet yeah i kind of think she's just like too sweet honestly for zach i mean a lot of these girls are too good for zach but Mm -hmm. definitely charity in particular like it just it's like she's so nice that it's a mismatch i don't really feel that way about some other women it's like the up some of the other women like have some personality traits in common with zach I do still think most of them are like way too good for him. But I do think of Charity in particular, I'm like, this is, it's like really lopsided. She's like so, (laughs) she's just so sweet. She really shouldn't be with someone who is so 
mid. <laughs> so sad. Do you know who I see her being with? Is it Rodney? It's Brandon Jones. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I was thinking Rodney. I said this during the episode. I was like, she would be a really good fit with, for someone else who's like a teddy bear. And I thought of Rodney. He was the one that came to my mind. Um, Brandon Jones would be a good one. Although I love Brandon Jones with Serene, so I can't. I can't. I love uh, him with Serene too. But I think his personality of just being so sweet and just kind of like worshipping the ground that she walks on, which Charity deserves based on her relationship history. Like, she just needs to be with someone who is kind of, like, achingly sweet and tender yeah. and reveres her as, like, the most beautiful woman Ooh. of all time. Because that's just, like, the kind of vibe that Brandon has. That's kind of the kind of person I like to date. So I was like, whoa, yeah. I just want that for charity. Zach yeah. feels a little bit, like, I don't know, not very yeah. mid. You're right. Just not yeah. super exceptional for a person like charity who just deserves yeah. someone that will just really, you know, just like fan her, shower with like banana her with leaves. Love. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like that's what I, I want. completely agree. Brandon Jones is a great one. I think Rodney could be a good one. Rodney's I would love to see too. Rodney come back to Paradise and, uh, yeah, hang out with Charity. I feel like that that would really click for me. We moved on to our group date. The main thing that was going on in the group date was actually Jess. So Jess is someone who. Since night one, I personally thought, and I think a lot of people thought that she and Zach had a pretty good connection. I think a lot of people saw her as a potential front runner, herself included. I think she saw herself as someone who was really connecting with Zach. And I think she was pretty surprised that by this point, she had still not gotten a one-on-one date. I think I said this about her, that she really reminds me of Abigail. Hmm. Herringer, I can't remember what her last name of Abigail, who in Matt James's season was such a like Matt James and her had such a cute relationship throughout the season. They were just so really vibing and she felt like a front runner, but she just never got a one on one date. And then at the very end, like she just got right before her, like hometowns, she just was sent home without ever getting a one on one date. And it felt like very like uh, premature or like there was failure to launch, right? And so I kind of feel like that's kind of what's happening or what happened with Jess. It was kind of like she never got her one-on-one date or maybe he was saving her for the very end and she just got clearly quality time is her love language. She is someone who really values being able to have that QT with someone and, you know, it it got to her. I, I think that she did, she probably got a bit in her head or a bit, Mm -hmm. um, you know, she mentioned, she's like, I have a lot of anxiety. I I like deal with a lot of insecurity. And I think this is like particularly hard for me for that reason. And I really appreciated her self-awareness around that. She really seemed to acknowledge, like, I think I'm I'm just like kind of having an anxiety attack and like, or like I was having an anxiety attack, but I'm good now. Like she seems very self-aware of the fact that like sometimes her emotions can kind of um, she, she can kind of struggle to manage them or struggle to, or she'll just like kind of spin her wheels on something. Um, and she seemed to be trying to reel it in. And I think it all kind of fell apart in her conversation with Zach because Zach sat down and asked, how are you feeling? And she was like, well, okay, I'll tell you because you asked. And so she told him about her feeling insecure about not getting a one-on-one date. And he just responded, so poorly he just really was like one-on-one dates don't matter like you should just take my word for it that I like you and like I like you and that should be enough and she was like okay and and I again like I appreciate it in this conversation that she was like I'm gonna really try to like take you at your word I'm gonna really try to take that seriously she was like I'm gonna try to hold that in my mind And also, like, I want you to understand, like, why this upsets me. Like, it upsets me to not get a one-on-one date. And I do think it matters. And he was like, why do you keep harping on the one-on-one date? Why do you keep harping on this? Like, you know, if we can't agree on this, then I feel like we're just like, then I'm I'm losing my confidence in you. Keep bringing up, like, it's about a one-on-one. And I'm I'm feeling so confident about us. And then it's about a one-on-one? What am I missing? (laughs) Um... I understand your perspective that one-on-ones are not what I think that they are, but like to not get a one-on-one when in my position, a one-on-one is a big deal. 
Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I don't know where your head's at. Like, I'm confused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, like, and I'll always be honest with you, I feel like there's that disconnect, I guess. I don't feel any more sure about this, and I feel nervous, and I don't think I can feel fully nervous, so I don't know how you feel, but I'm not feeling that confident. It was just very strange, because it was like, I don't understand. Like, even if you don't agree that one-on-ones are important, which obviously they are, but even if you don't agree, it's like it's exactly what we just said about with Kat. It's like, you don't need to agree. You can just say like, you can just try to understand where she's coming from. Like, just try to understand like, hey, as it turns out for Jess, the one-on-one -on -one is really important. I did not know that, but now I know it. And now that she has told me, I can let her know I wasn't thinking about it in that way. I didn't want to upset you. Like, I really like you. And now that I know that quality time is important to you, I'm going to try to adjust my behavior and do it differently. Like, so simple. And instead, Zach had to be like, you're wrong. Your feelings don't make sense. It doesn't make <laughs> sense for you to feel this way. One-on-ones don't matter. Why do you keep saying this? Like, it's like, Zach, what the heck? Like, what? if we can't agree on this, it's just like, we're going to go in circles, then I guess you need to just go home. And it's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you have to agree on every single thing for you to date a woman? Like, I, I don't understand. It just, it, it felt like the conversation was so ridiculous. And personally, I think it was just, he was just being stubborn. He just didn't want to admit that his actions had hurt this girl. So when she sat down and she started talking to Zach about it, you can tell that he was like, wait, we're not going to make out. We're not going to like... <laughs> <laughs> you're not having fun like I he was so confused because I think he entered that conversation being like I kind of want to interact with you on a very surface level way I just want to mm. see you having fun I want us to laugh I want you to open up to me but not open up too much and he really just reminds me of so many like fair weather people that we date mm. we're just kind of like fuck boys of like I think I really like him but for me to like him I can't be too much around him because he only wants me to be this way. You know, like you're not going to say too much. You're not going to do too much. You're just going to be like one kind of person. And it mm -hmm. really did surprise him when Jess was like, actually, I feel really emotional. And the one-on-one, -on -one, like if he unpacked it, it was about like, I want to feel validated that if I do feel like I want to get married to you and you want to get married to me, then why wouldn't I want a one-on-one -on -one date? Why wouldn't I want to have a deeper time to really connect to you and have confirmation that you feel for me what I feel for you. But as soon as like she started to display her emotions, he wasn't interested in validating her. He was like offended that she was asking for quality time and he yeah. was so shocked with that. And it's like because he's not very good at processing his emotions, he just couldn't move past like the shock to be like, well, like I do you feel confident about you and my confidence is unwavering instead what he did which is the absolute worst thing to do when you're like sharing your vulnerabilities is like actually everything you do think in this very moment i don't feel confident about you anymore even though i just said it a few minutes ago i actually feel like we're on totally different pages i actually feel like you're looking for something different and that you're wanting validation in something that is so silly, so minuscule to what I'm looking for, which is a wife, that we're not in the same page when they were talking about the same thing. Like I felt like that conversation was so disjointed because it felt like they weren't able to see that they were kind of having two competing conversations. Jess was like, I really want one-on-one -on -one time so I can connect with you more. And he was like, why do you want one-on-one -on -one time? but I am looking for my wife. It was like, why aren't you able to see where Jess is coming from and just see that like, it's totally valid for her to say this. And that's, this is a moment. This is an invitation for you to step into. I really like this person and I really want to make sure that she feels good. Let me make her feel really special. And in that conversation yeah. that could have been deepened and it could have been bonding, he instead was like this disagreement makes me feel really really uncomfortable and this is confirmation that you're not the right person for me and then he just sent her home everything she said in the car is exactly what i thought like she just felt confused so shocked by his behavior 
And she was like, I just don't get why he wasn't able to see what I was seeing. And it's like, this is a pattern. Like, this is how he's going to be like in conflict. He just feels like he gets so overwhelmed in the moment when things aren't going the way that he wants it to go or when it's not fun that he just kind of yeah. immediately shuts down or he's like, I'm going to like walk away from this and I think we should just right. break up. This is his immaturity showing. This is his age showing. Because if he had been in relationships that were really serious and they really got to know each other on a deeper level, there's no way that he would treat someone like that the second someone yeah. showed, this is who I really am and this is something I'm looking for. Because the insecurity that she has is totally valid. It's totally normal and I'm glad that she was able to speak to it. I really liked that she was so aware of her emotions and she was like, I am feeling insecure and all I really do need is for someone to give me a soft space to feel more comfortable so I can be myself. And what ended up happening was that he just made her feel really bad about it and it, you know, she wanted a one-on-one -on -one time and what she got was like a one-way trip back home. And I just hate like how that conversation turned for her because if she didn't say that, it's very likely that Zach would have kept her around, but then at what cost? It's like the cost of her like not really speaking about this stuff and her feeling like internally just kind of like ripping herself to shreds being like, am I thinking what Zach's feeling, but then not saying it to him. Him not really knowing how to handle like this depth of conversation and i can yeah. see that kind of like ricocheting into the following weeks when the girls start to ask more of him and it becomes right. less fun but it becomes more of like i'm evaluating you right. to be my husband which is a what rachel did in her season with him and i can kind of see zach just falling apart because he's gonna be like wait this isn't fun this isn't like me just traveling around the world these girls actually have needs they're not this thing that you can just like you know project your fantasies on in that conversation jess yeah she wanted validation she wanted zach to confirm that he really liked her and he did do that but what she really wanted and i think the reason why they were really butting heads is because she wanted to hear him say like that her feelings, the thing that she, her insecurity around this one-on-one -on -one time, she wanted to hear him say that that was valid. And he refused to do that. He refused to acknowledge that her feeling bad about something that he did, which is not give her the one-on-one -on -one date, he refused to admit that it was okay for her to feel that way. And I think that's what really kind of set her off because she was like, you really aren't going to admit that you know, I will, it makes sense for me to be insecure that I'm not getting actual quality time with you. Like, you're not going to admit that. And that's what she was saying on the limo ride home. You're right. When she said that, I was like, she, what she's, she's saying right. makes total sense. It's not just about, I want Zach to say that he likes me. It's about in this conversation, I want to feel like you are actually hearing me. Like you are acknowledging the fact that you hurt me. It's not just like, you know, some guy in my past has hurt me, it's you, right? I wanna feel like you are hearing me. And he was like, no, I'm not gonna admit that. I'm not gonna admit that I owed you something. I'm not gonna admit that something that I did upset you. He refused to acknowledge that. And the funny thing is that, like what he said after she left, it, he was in his um, little in the moment interview, he says, you know, we were butting heads and I knew that we weren't going to agree. And so I sent her home and it's like, what do you mean? It's like, I think this is like a huge mistake that people make. It's like, you don't need to agree on everything. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't need to agree with her, right? You don't need to agree with all the things that she says. Like, you don't need to agree with everything. Your You and your partner don't need to agree on things. And for him to send her home over that, that says a lot about the way, to your point, he moves through relationships. It's like for him to think that his wife needs to agree with everything he says. And if she says anything that he disagrees with, he's just going to send her home. It's like, what kind of relationship is that? What are you expecting from these women? The fact that he could not just say like, hey, now I see it from your perspective. I see what you're trying to say. I see why you feel that way. And I want to, you know, address, I want to make you feel better. I want to address that. I want to make sure that you feel seen and that you know that I'm going to come through for you in this way that you are asking me to. The fact that he couldn't do that, just, it, it boggles the mind. I think it boggled Jess's mind. He even said that thing about like, 
it's crazy how things can change after one conversation. Like no accountability. It's like things didn't just change. You changed it, right? He has no acknowledgement for the fact that his own actions contributed to why this didn't work out. This isn't something that just happened to you. This is something that your actions directly contributed to. If one conversation can completely change a relationship that's going well, right? He liked her, right? He thought that things were going well with her. It's one conversation can change everything. That's a you problem, right? And I feel like this really supports our whole theory about what happened in his fantasy suite with Rachel, right? This whole thing of like, did did she suddenly become a different person or did she just express doubts and he didn't like that? Did Rachel, was Rachel two-sided? Did Ra- Was Rachel fake? Or did she open up to him, express her doubts, tell him something that she was insecure about related to their relationship, tell him that, hey, I'm worried that I have stronger relationships like I like you, but here are the things that I I, am like concerned about. And did he take that as, whoa, one conversation changed everything. Exactly what he said with Jess. I feel like it really shows the lens through which he sees women, right? I really think he cannot tolerate women who have any negative emotions, who have any doubts, who ask him for anything, who have any needs. It's like if someone is upset with him, he'll end the relationship and say, everything changed suddenly. She wasn't who I thought he was. Basically kind of blame this girl, the girl for having doubts, having needs, take no responsibility for meeting them, no acknowledgement for the fact that if he had handled it differently, maybe things would have gone differently, right? It's always about things just happened. There's never any acknowledgement for his role in it. So He clearly doesn't think he should be responsible for supporting the women he's dating, I guess is my point. It just seems like he doesn't really acknowledge that it's his responsibility to address their needs, and he doesn't have any interest in that. He doesn't have any interest in putting any effort into the relationship beyond showing up and having a good time, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I like you, and that should be enough. Don't have needs. Like, that's, that's his, that's what he's asking for women. Like, you should be happy because I like you. If you need something beyond that, then it's a problem. That's what I'm getting from Zach. And I'm kind of glad the internet is starting to see it too. It feels like a lot of people are now starting to kind of coalesce around this consensus that maybe Zach isn't who we thought he was. And you and I have been saying it for a while. (laughs) You and I have kind of been onto this for a while. We have been I mean, honestly, since the Rachel fantasy suite, we've been very skeptical, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, trying to, you know, let him prove us wrong. But we've been saying this since the beginning of this season, since the way he treated Brianna. So uh, it, this whole episode, I just kept being like, classic Zach. It just, it's the same old, same old that he keeps on doing with every single girl. Mm. You're so spot on of your, like how you read him because the subtext of a lot of what he's saying is like don't expect anything more than what I'm willing to give you and what I'm willing to give you is fun I'm willing to give you lightness I'm willing to give you a lot of enthusiasm and those are good qualities in a relationship but that's such a small percentage for sure he's gonna get engaged because he's angling for it so hard and because these girls are not seeing Zach clearly. They're just so looking to impress him. This really does feel like to me kind of like mid-20s dating. Like this is exactly how I would expect a 26-year-old guy to be dating who has like this television show behind him. He just has no idea of the kind of depth and vulnerability that he's looking to build. And I just think that as soon as the season starts to like like they're watching the season back and she's like talking to Zach she's gonna be like oof I don't like this like I don't like how he makes me feel I don't want to just have a good time with my partner I want to be sad and I want to be emotional and I want my partner to show up and support me not make me feel bad not judge me not look down on me not pick a fight with me and walk away because he can't handle my emotions and needs right is what I'm seeing a lot of Zach so like I'm making a really early prediction here but yeah like he's not gonna last with whoever his person is at the very end and I honestly feel bad for that person at the end because no one wants a relationship like that you don't deserve that unless it's like something casual and you're just like hanging out and like having fun with them and dating but that's not 
husband material that's barely yeah. boyfriend material like what zach is right. putting out i yeah so when just went home and she said everything in the car that's exactly how i felt in that situation and maybe zach and kat would be a good match for each other because of how much they were like unwilling to like be empathetic and really read the room and see how everyone else is feeling <laughs> because they're so focused on their experience so then these two people who are not very self-aware that would be good in a relationship but then eventually they're kind of like butt heads when there's not a lot of growth past like having mini golfing on the weekends and going on vacations (laughs) with your friends like when that wears off like where does that lead you and it makes me a little bit sad for like his particular situation and I do hope he learns from it because I don't know like I just expect more I have like really high standards for this show now because they they said it's a love story but I don't see love anywhere all I see is like a person that's just forcing people through his narrative and looking for such a limited scope of happiness that it's gonna lead to unhappiness later on yeah I I think that's really well said it feels like the only way that I could see this When I say working out, I don't even mean actually like being in a healthy relationship. We said this last week, but the only way that I could see a relationship with Zach, at least in his current state, again, like people can change, people can grow and hopefully he will. But in his current state, the only way I can see a relationship really working is if it's someone who is kind of willing to make themselves small or willing to kind of change their personality to, to fit what Zach is wanting. And you're right. It's like, Kat was the one who throughout this episode, she even said at one point, she was like, the only thing I care about is Zach's opinion. So I like, she was like feeling really like upset about the whole charity Brooklyn thing. And then she was like, okay, but I don't want to like even be thinking about this before my one-on-one time with Zach. And then she goes into the one-on-one time with Zach. This is at the cocktail party already, like at the end of the episode. And Zach goes, you've seemed off this week. Is everything okay? And she's like, everything's fine love hanging out i was like oh cat like bottle it up girl (laughs) perfect match like bottle it up keep it wrapped up be exactly what he wants that's gonna work that's gonna work for zach because that's what zach wants and so again that doesn't mean that i think it's a healthy relationship but i do actually see someone like that excelling with someone like zach because (laughs) if you are someone who believes that that's what you need to do in a relationship bottle it up and you know always show your (laughs) perky self then you're going to be a good fit for someone like Zach who is quote unquote no drama, i.e. no conflict, no needs, never ask me for anything, right? Yeah, that would be my the only situation where I could see Zach and his whoever he ends up with at the end of the season. That's the only situation in which I can see a long-term relationship working out. All of the girls he has now, they're great. They're, they're really wonderful. I like all yeah. of them. Uh, and I... I think that they'll want more because, I mean, this is something that happens a lot with dating is when you're wanting to impress someone so badly, you're not even really thinking, are they right for me? You're just like, how can I be more of what they're looking for? And how can I do the things that they would like so they could choose me back? Because you're just wanting to be chosen so badly. Right. I think as soon as like the show, the lights go off and they're just sitting at home together, they're going to look at Zach and be like, I want this love story. I want to feel like deeply, deeply, deeply emotionally bonded with someone. Zach isn't able to give it based on what he's demonstrated so far. And I say this based on like his pattern with Rachel, how he continues to bad mouth her in his season how he's chosen to send home all of these girls so far like the soon as anyone shows any type of vulnerability any type of conflict any kind of disagreement zach is like well then you're not for me and this is what i'm looking for i'm looking for someone that's not going to give me those things but as soon as like the cracks show in the relationship and it's not even cracks but it's just like that's what it's like you're never going to normal perfectly... human emotions <laughs> exactly you're never going to be perfectly suited for someone you could meet someone that's truly the love of your life and because you're two different people with two different upbringings and two different experiences, disagreements will come up. It's inevitable. He hasn't shown any kind of um, healthy way of being able to move through that. 
So I do think the girl will be the one that's like, I don't want this. I don't want this with you. Now that I really see you outside of the show, outside of me needing to be this person for you, I I want something more. And Zach ideally would grow from this experience and think, okay, what's happening? This is like a pattern so. that's been like demonstrated in my life. I need to really think about it. So we'll see. And this is all like I a hope prediction. So. Like we don't right. know Zach at all. And a lot of the show right. is us just talking about these relationship themes through the context of Zach. Yeah, there's a lot of directions I could see this going. There's a lot of directions. Like I, I have to hope, and I always hope this, that people will eventually recognize when they have a pattern that is leading them to not be able to successfully sustain a relationship. I, I think that people recognize it just by nature of like, this keeps not working. There must be a reason why. Sometimes they turn to always blaming the other person, which is kind of something that Zach seems to do, like that he'll like turn it into it was her fault or this just changed. Everything just changed suddenly. With Rachel, everything changed. With Jess, everything changed. So he does seem to not be taking a lot of accountability, but I do think that eventually with time or to your point like if he picks a woman that he wants to be his wife and the woman is like I want more from you hopefully he will eventually step up to the plate I do believe that over time people can recognize these areas for growth within themselves they just need the right the right push and hopefully it'll come for Zach I don't know that it's going to come for him in this scenario because in this season because it seems like You know, he's just getting so validated by the fact that he's the bachelor. The show lets him kind of do whatever he wants. And he feels like he can just send these women home. And he has so many other pretty women lined up that he doesn't really need to show up for any of them. He doesn't really need to take a hard, critical look at himself. So I don't think he's going to do it in in the course of this season. But hopefully in the course of his life, right, you know, he'll be able to do some of that work and, and maybe be able to recognize this pattern also i think people are calling him out hard on the internet right now so i feel like that's gonna if sometimes that can be quite the wake-up call right when people are coming in hot (laughs) exactly like you said we don't know zach we only know what we're being shown on this television show we always want to like put that as an asterisk we always want to acknowledge that we are only seeing limited edited scenes on this show and so maybe there's more to the story too and maybe there's more the nuance here that we aren't seeing but as of what we're seeing right now I do think that he is yeah everything feels cookie cutter it's like in this episode I just kept being like all right classic Zach doing the Zach thing again <laughs> like every every action I was like yep why am I not surprised uh, yep oh you love Ariel because she's so fun why am I not surprised oh you really you really are upset that Jess is starting to cry in front of you why am I not surprised like you know like everything he says I'm just like oh my gosh it just felt so like we had called it out so early and I was kind of hoping he would prove us wrong but hasn't happened thus far let us know down below what you all think of Zach's behavior and how he handled that Jess situation let us know what you think about the patterns that we're seeing of how he is handling these conflicts with these different women. Do you think that he's going to be able to find a successful relationship throughout this process? Or are you kind of with me and Julie a little bit skeptical about how this is all going to pan out? Also, thank you everyone for all of the amazing comments. Y'all were really coming with the insights last week. We are reading all of your comments and there are some really good conversations it. happening. Seriously, there's some good <laughs> conversations happening. Like you all are picking up on, you know, little details that we aren't even noticing too. And we really appreciate that you are sharing them down below. So keep that going. It's the whole point of why we do this. The whole point of why we are doing this channel and this show is that we want to have these conversations. We want to think about these relationship themes and about these behaviors so that we can apply them to our real lives you know we may not know what real life Zach is like but we know real life people (laughs) we know our own (laughs) lives we know our own relationships and we can talk about these themes in the context of our actual dating lives and so yeah let's keep the conversation going down below well after sending Jess home where really Jess sent herself home she was like I'm not gonna put up with this and she left which I love that for her but after Jess leaves Zach goes to his last one-on-one date with Ariel, which 
I love her. She was I love her. awesome. I want her I mean, to catch I, a right. Like, I, I've decided I, she's my favorite from his season. <laughs> yes, I completely agree. I think she'd make such a good bachelorette. She's clearly too hot and mature and level-headed oh. for him. I think that he will continue to keep her around because she is so, you know, she's just so even. And I think he obviously loves that. He loves someone who's, like, funny and even keeled. So he'll definitely keep her around. And she's so beautiful. But I think that she is definitely someone. I don't think she would be a pushover with Zach at all. I think that as soon as his true colors show, she will. She's out of there. Nope. The f- she's out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I do completely agree. I would love to see her be the Bachelorette. I think it would be awesome. She's just so cool and so, yeah, just mature. I feel like she would really bring a good energy to this ridiculous show so we then had a rose ceremony and Greer has been out all week because she has COVID so she got a free pass to stay but Allie was the one who went home sad to see her go but it did feel like she didn't really have a connection with Zach in comparison to the other women so I wasn't too surprised I mean we're really getting down to the kind of final women here Julie who is sticking out to you? Who are you seeing as the front runners at this point in the season? It's Gabby, it's Katie, and it's Ariel. Those are mm. clearly his top three. All mm. three of those girls are exactly what he's looking for. They're fun, they're low drama, and they always give him a good time. There's no drama in the house. Like I think yeah. that's what Zach is evaluating every girl through. And I can Mm -hmm. also tell because Zach has eyes, he knows they're all like out of his league. And, (laughs) but I do think that the person that I can actually see, like who, who he actually will choose is Katie. He likes Katie so much and it's so obvious the way that he gives her validation, the way that he talks to her, the way that they make out. It's so different from Ariel, who just seems really beautiful, but seems like they wouldn't be on the same page. Like, as the relationship deepens, I think Ariel want more, and Zach won't be able to give that. With Gabby, I can see a little bit of some connection. It feels similar to Katie, but he just gives a little bit extra to Katie that I can just tell, like, he is thinking that she's going to be the one at the end. So it's really, like, her season to lose. It just yeah, depends on I how she's going to kind of, like, interact with him. But as long as she stays the course and she keeps doing what she's doing, yeah, she's going to be the one. I'm not sure that I'm as sure because I feel like he keeps sending home women that I thought were front runners. <laughs> I so I don't know. It was like yeah. Christina and then Bailey and then Jess. Like those are three girls, all of whom I thought were really good matches for him. But then they had a feeling or had a need and he sent them home. So, you know, right. it's just... For all we know, next week, Katie will have a feeling and he'll be like, ew, and he'll send her home. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's kind of hard for me to guess because I do agree that Katie is like the girl he seems to be connecting with the most right now. But I do continue to wonder if, you know, just like with Jess, it's like Jess had a feeling and then Zach sent her home. So it's just, it it makes me feel like all of these girls you know, could be on shaky ground. Unless, to your point, they just really stay the course. I agree with you that I think Ariel is the one who I could see just eventually realizing that she wants more and kind of lifting herself out. Kind of like, uh, who was it? Um, Oh, Charlene. Like Charlene back in her season. Like Charlene was like, yeah, I think I want more than this. I'm out. (laughs) Even though that guy liked her so much. I can't remember who it was. She did seem to like him on the date, but I just think that she's so smart that as soon as she sees Zach's true colors, which she may not have seen herself at this point just yet, but I think as soon as she sees it, she'll, yeah, I think she'll just lift herself right out, as opposed to Katie, who I think I could kind of see Katie putting up with it. I don't know yet because I don't know her well enough, but I could kind of, she even kind of talked about this in her one-on-one date. She was like, I had that on and off again relationship with this guy Mm -hmm. who like kind of didn't, like, what was it? He like didn't appreciate her or something or she felt like she had to like, she was trying really hard to like control the situation and like kind of appease him. She kind of said something to that effect. So I kind of feel like "Mm, that's also sounds like kind of a good fit for, for Zach who needs 
to be appeased at all times. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of wonder if Katie might be a good fit for him in that sense. And then Gabby, he just seems to like a lot. So I don't know. I can't really, I don't, you called Gabby like so like night one, which I continue to be so shocked about. I don't feel like I get Gabby. I feel like I like her a lot, but I don't feel like I get her. So I don't, she's so interesting and weird. So I can't really, I don't feel like I have a good read of like what she's, like so it's hard for me to understand how she will click with Zach but I think those are a pretty good read I think Kat is the only other one that I would really Hmm. throw back in there because it does feel like he likes Kat a lot she's obviously like a bombshell so I think he will he would struggle to send her home frankly because she's so beautiful and you know she is one of those people like we said that she has demonstrated a willingness to kind of keep her feelings in so I kind of feel like that could be it could play in her favor unless Brooklyn brings up to Zach what Kat did in the house in which case she'll get sent packing so she's the least even I would say of those three of Ariel Katie and Gabby Kat is the one who's the who's more likely to have a feeling or like have a need I think of those four so those would be my top four but then I don't know if I know who I think he's gonna pick in the end because mm. I don't know he'll send women home over nothing so it's it's hard to You're say right. but I think one of the reasons why I feel like I really see Katie kind of being like the leader of this pack is because of what she said about her previous relationship where she do you remember they had that museum date and she was like I've never been treated this well and it was a producer date it wasn't like even anything Zach did for her so I think because her expectations and this is sad to say like are so low she might just see what Zach's giving her and be like wow this is amazing you know like she'll be able to make a lie out of very very little I I would love it for charity to make it decently far but to your point she kind of feels similar to like Ariel to me where she is very sweet but I think as soon as the relationship deepens she'll start to be like whoa I want more from this and I can just see her lifting herself right out as well yeah I think that's true she's also she's a therapist so she's you know exactly she's smart the thing with charity is that she's so sweet that I feel like anyone who's around her just wants to take care of her look at Brooklyn Brooklyn is like I will literally go to war for charity (laughs) like Brooklyn is like throwing it down on Charity's behalf and I kind of think a lot of people feel that way I feel that way and I kind of think Zach feels that way Zach is like having a little bit of like when Charity opened up on her one-on-one date about her experiences with emotional abuse I kind of feel like Zach was like whoa like he kind of um did the same thing that he did with Katie a little bit of like a white knight thing of like oh you've been hurt I'm gonna come in I'm gonna be the one who's gonna save you and be a good guy to you so I think he had a little bit of that with her so I kind of feel like Zach will be on his best behavior with Charity so I wonder if that's why it could take Charity a longer time to recognize Hmm. Zach's red flags because I feel like he's being a little bit like almost like protective of her which is very sweet but it just seems like he might not necessarily show his true colors to her like I think he'll reject her before she even realizes that he kind of sucks if that makes mm-hmm. sense <laughs> like <laughs> because Charity has had such a complex relationship past and it's been so painful the partner that she deserves to be with should be a person that makes her feel so safe to like really open up and to heal mm. within the context of that relationship yeah I don't really yeah. see Zach being the person that's going to shepherd her through that journey yeah I just don't see him co-creating that with her in any way so because of that yeah. I'm just like manifesting that she's not going to be in the top three for her sake because I just don't think Zach is a person for her I think yeah. Katie and Zach could have some very interesting things to teach each other because let's be yeah, real they're right. not gonna get married <laughs> so at least they can learn something before that point you know because they're not gonna get married there's no way I'd be very very surprised Gosh. if they did uh but Katie is all honestly like to me Katie is also really sweet I think she probably doesn't I have as critical as critical a lens as Charity probably would if she saw like all of Zach's behavior I think Charity would be able to smell it I don't know that Katie necessarily would and it kind of worries me because I think Katie's actually just as sweet as Charity just like maybe not as willing to stand up for herself as I think Charity would be and so I am a little bit worried about Katie insofar as like I don't know 
I kind of, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried about her. I feel like she has, it could really get hurt in this situation. The nice thing about Zach is that he is well-intentioned. So even if him and Katie or any of these girls end up together, he's not gonna, he's like not doing it to be malicious or mean. Like the way that he sees relationships, it comes with time and more experiences. Like for him to kind of get out of this limited view and for him to not funnel women with yeah. like this cookie cutter image, that's right. really the most like injurious and harmful thing that he's doing, but he's not doing it to be manipulative. And I think that's the right. only reason why. That's true. I feel like with Zach, it will be like if it is Katie at the end, he won't try to be like mean or rude to her. It's just like the way that he's seeing relationships and like his immaturity yeah. of it. So I don't think he's yeah. gonna hurt her intentionally. And I think fortunately or unfortunately, what might end up happening is that before they even have a chance to like build a life together, they Zach or her might just like call it off before then because they're just like oh wow like we're just not the right match for each other Mm -hmm. but who knows because I know he has a lot of pride over being a person that's taking his season so seriously but everything he's doing to me is like he's dating so like more immature than I've seen any bachelor date in a long time I mean Clayton was pretty bad but the way that Zach is doing it, I'm just like, dude, you're totally dating your age. And I just don't see how you're taking it, like how you're being thoughtful about it because you're not being thoughtful about it. You're just like being very young and kind of like brutish about it. Let us know down below what you think. Who do you think is, who are the front runners? Who would you put in your top three? Oh, we should talk about maybe doing a fantasy uh, league again. We did a Bachelor Fantasy League at one point, yeah. but we haven't done it since. Um, but let us know who would you put in your top three or top four? Who would be who's the person who you think Zach is going to pick at the end? If you know spoilers, don't say it. Don't I say it to it us. We don't want to know. We just <laughs> want to know if we were reading Zach correctly. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's where me and Kelly are just like, uh, yeah. yeah, we're just wanting to like extrapolate as much as we can about knowing any spoilers or anything that happens at the end. So do keep it unspoiled below in the comments, but we can't wait to hear anything. If you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We do Bachelor recap videos every week and we'll be back next week for episode seven. So we'll see you then. Bye.